Hello my friend and welcome. This is your moment. I'm Katarina Miletic and you are listening to the podcast that will challenge you to think with your soul and believe that your only power is inside you. Hi Rob. Hello. <laughs> Looking lovely. It's nice to meet you. You too. Love meeting other entrepreneurs who are also artists. Do you find that like, because you, you may attract loads of stuff, aren't you? As an entrepreneur, you may attract sales, may attract how many messages you send. Do you find with the artistic side of thinking that those two things don't really go together? <laughs> I think we were born to do it really. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I really, I don't feel nothing out of uh, alignment with who I am. Quite the opposite, when I was in corporate world for a while, like five years, I disconnected from the art world mm. and went into law firm and um, things didn't sit right. I felt mm -hmm. very much I'm waiting for, for that perfect moment, waiting for the opportunity. While on this side, I know I'm creating it. I know it's all in my hands. I know it's, everything is in my control. Um, so you see, I feel like fish in the water. <laughs> Amazing. Right. So, I know exactly what you mean as well. Like the yes. first, first job I had was in a butcher's. And like, I haven't eaten meat in eight years. So that tells you something, surely. <laughs> and then the jobs I had after that were like in call centers and mm. so far out of alignment. Right. I well, wouldn't, wouldn't go back for... Uh, no amount of money would make me want to do that again. Exactly, exactly. But n nothing teaches us like that learned experience. Mm. It's nice to have some realizations through someone else's insight and experience. It's always, it always strikes me as something like a very smart thing to do. But somehow it was always elusive to me. To me, it, it always works best if I experience it on my yeah. own skin. It's like I've earned this experience. Really delighted to meet you. And so glad that you're coming on This Is Your Moment podcast. Glad and to be here. Thank you for having me. So the way that I felt the conversation between us in the messenger chat is always distinctive from when somebody has a different agenda to fulfill than when somebody mm. is genuinely saying hello and I'm I'm glad I met you, you know, for whatever may unfold from this. That first interaction to me always has to be, you know, hello and hello. <laughs> like two two human souls really genuinely uh, excited to that have connected. Let's start with with entrepreneurship because it, it sort of exposes the values that we lead our life with right it exposes us in that way it exposes us not just to other people but to ourselves as well right so it's a great tool absolutely so i went into entrepreneurship with a digital marketing agency and that's something that you can definitely like hide behind for the most part like okay. You talk to people to get clients and then you do them a service. Like you don't have to put yourself out there so much. But it's like right. trying to coach people on mindset. You have to lead by example. <laughs> so um, if you're like telling people, hey, just get yourself out there and like do some videos online, they're going to turn around and go, well, you don't do anything like that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you have to lead by example. Yeah, I think there is a lot of like inauthentic um, connection yes. made online. And it's, yeah, becoming a very muddy mm. kind of uh, place to be, especially on like Facebook. Yeah. And sometimes it, it might not even be intentional, right? It, it's just that awkwardness gets into something that really is, is pretense then. You know, well, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be like genuinely this is the first time we are actually having a conversation. And yet if we bring openness to it, we can really explore what is behind this um, 
entity here that has lived this, you know, 51 years on, on this plane. And, uh, and in your case, right, I, I understand how the experience looks from the other angle. Uh, seeing two points of view, seeing two perspectives of the same thing. And we're looking at it through lens of art and lens of entrepreneurship. And maybe we will weave into that some storytelling. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, sounds excellent. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so your story is very interesting. And uh, why don't you take us on that journey? What was young Rob feeling? Like what was really lighting you on fire? And how did you come then to entrepreneurship now? How young are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever first you notice that you there is more to exploring something, you know, that you were passionate or that brought you joy to do. Ah, uh, so I have had a very um, strenuous relationship with trying to experience joy. Mm -hmm. I have struggled with depression for my entire adult life and somewhat before that as well. Like, I was 19 days late when being born. So, and I think that had a massive effect on how I grew up. Mm -hmm. I was also violently ADHD. So like my upbringing, despite how fantastic my parents are, and they are fantastic, mm -hmm. very patient. Like I was a, a little git basically. And I had a lot of internal pain. I was never like malicious. Mm -hmm. And my mum has always said, even despite like how we butted heads when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. I was never aggressive towards her I, I never swore nice. I, I, I don't really swear at people ever yeah. um but I had a lot of internal pain which is where all that um like angst came from mm -hmm. but in having that angst obviously there's a lot of music that uh you exactly. can use to perpetuate the angst but also to make you feel kind of validated in having it mm -hmm. and like I, I love Nirvana um rage against the machine rise against well like Love. and then some more classic stuff because i obviously mm -hmm. was learning guitar at the same time so like Jimi hendrix led zeppelin like Beautiful. all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so yeah i in my teenage years along with being angsty i learned guitar and um after gcse's i went to the art college in plymouth and studied film mm -hmm. um the, uh, the award behind me here is for um, the piece that I made at the end of my degree. It was the Undergraduate Drama of the Year from the Rural Television Society. So I'm an award-winning filmmaker, which is pretty cool. After graduating, I made music videos and had a, had a laugh doing that, but it wasn't like financially viable mm -hmm. or sustainable. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to work in, in London um last ditch attempt of using taking my um parents advice on what i should do in my career <laughs> and i'm not doing that again as lovely as they are they have no idea what i want to be doing um but i took a job in a post-production house in soho hated it um actually took a holiday to budapest in the middle of my time there and came back like really depressed and um from that came to the conclusion that i needed to do something with location freedom and then something where I was working for myself and I had autonomy. So I, I took a course on running Facebook ads and how to start a digital marketing agency from there. Did that uh, along with some other things. Uh, so I did Facebook ads, web design. We offered SEO and Google ads, which I didn't have too much input into because they're kind of boring. <laughs> Necessary, but boring. Um, and then kind of got to around Christmas time, just gone and kind of had that epiphany of like, this isn't fulfilling. I, I don't like at the point where my agency was making the most money. Mm -hmm. I was also drinking the most alcohol mm. on a daily basis. Like if you add money to a lack of fulfillment, it's only going to make that worse. Okay. So yeah, around Christmas, I made the decision that I needed to pivot. Mm -hmm. um, I also made the decision as of 2022, no more drinking. My plan was to do the whole year, but now I think like I'm six months in and I don't miss it. So I'm probably just going to stay teetotal anyway. And um, yeah, 
I'm coaching on mindset and every day I learn something new. It's fantastic. It's great. It's really great to, to keep us in check with, with who we are and where we're going in life. I just love your story so much and, and uh, thank you so much for, for sharing it so openly, so, so vulnerably and just uh, it, it, it invites us to look inside our own soul. Um, it doesn't matter how successful we are in doing something. If it isn't also fulfilling mm. inside our being, we need to be aware of it. We need to give ourselves permission to say, maybe there is more. Maybe I can explore more without maybe, you know, the expectation that that second thing needs to be as successful, but it, it's if we guide ourselves towards fulfillment, mm. I think we will be finding that success comes as a natural result exactly. of that. Right? And like Tony Robbins talks about the science of success, but the art of fulfillment. Yes. Like if you do certain things, you will make money. Yes. Like yes. as long as you do them consistently, it's going to happen. Yes. Yes. Whereas fulfillment is very subjective. And having money, well, by and large, having money isn't the end game. Like you said, it's a byproduct. Yeah. I think the where people get confused is where they play the outside in game. When they get however many likes on a Facebook post or when they have a certain amount of clients or when they've made a certain amount, hit a revenue target, then they're allowed to feel happy. Right. When really, if you come from the place of all needs met, and you go outside, uh, inside out, and you put forward the energy of abundance and like being perfect, whole and complete, but not yet finished. You come from that kind of energy, and then you, you're going to attract money at the same, yes. same time for things that you're actually aligned with as well. Absolutely. It, it's like when, it, when we set that dial to, to growth and expansion of our own soul, of our own being in this world, of this uh, experience of life. When we embrace that we are designing it, we are co-creating it with the source. Mm. And when we, when we align ourselves to that, all of these other things that we think we are seeking, and, and if we seek them first, they might not lead to this fulfillment. But if we, Again, if we align to it first, then um, the success will be automatic. It will follow. Mm. It will follow for this. It cannot not follow. You cannot be uh, fulfilled and um, waking up with uh, really being excited to be alive and not be a success in your life at whatever you do at, in your relationships first and foremost in the relationship that you have with yourself mm. because that is the one that on, on which everything hangs right well everything starts as thought if mm. and you can either be empowered by what you're thinking or you can be imprisoned by it yes. and then that also the important thing to realize there is we talk to ourselves our thoughts are in words it's in language yes. so how people talk to themselves is like people nobody thinks of it because like you think of it like the crazy people that you see that are like homeless and on drugs and whatever walking around talking to himself mm. so talking to yourself is seen as being something crazy but we all have an internal monologue mm -hmm. and if that internal monologue is you're useless you suck you're never going to get anywhere yeah. it works the same as as google like if that's what you're focusing on, you're only ever going to get answers that uh, it's confirmation bias, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you, if that's what you're thinking, it's what you will see. Yes. Where energy, get, uh, where focus goes, energy flows. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have that uh, a relationship of self-love and like mm -hmm. knowing your worth, that's what you can project out, and then yes. other people will see that as well. Indeed. I'm loving how many different ways we can find to, to say these things, but they ultimately absolutely lead to this seeing the world and seeing our life from inside out, having the connection mm. with ourselves and not running away from that connection. Um, having 
uh, compassion for the person who lives inside our mind, who is inhabiting this body that we call me, um, and getting really to know that person. And I, I'm also not, not afraid of having a conversation with that person. I, in fact, I encourage it and, and say, have a, have a chat with yourself. Where are you from originally? Um, I did read this, but I've forgotten. Sorry. No problem. I am from Belgrade. Serbia. Yeah. It came up on a quiz the other day. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what it's like over there, but as a British person, there's genuinely something called British guilt. Mm -hmm. which is goes along with why British people are always saying sorry for everything. Mm -hmm. But guilt is one of the lowest frequencies in terms of vibration that you can be mm -hmm. running on. So like when that is your societal conditioning, yes. and is it any wonder that everyone's placing blame on things like the government and the economy, mm -hmm. but where you place blame, you give control. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. Yeah. That's not empowering. <laughs> no, no. There is this approach and attitude towards life that you can adopt, and that is to give higher meaning and to give the empowering meaning to everything that you're experiencing. You quoted Tony Robbins, and I will say something that also really strikes me. Um, what, what he says is that uh, what is wrong is always available. It's always in front of us, but mm -hmm. so is what is right. So yes. is what is right, right? So it is always a matter of choosing the meaning that we give to something and realizing this is just my thinking. It's my mm -hmm. thinking about this that's making me feel and experience this in this way. And if, if I know that I'm not my thoughts, it means I can choose them. I can choose not to really attach myself to that thought that is disempowering me that is making me feel hopeless that is uh, really br taking me down exactly but what you're describing there actually ties into what i teach within my program yeah. where we have a very specific process mm -hmm. for neutralizing events in the past which have been assigned meaning mm -hmm. because everything's neutral until we assign give it a meaning absolutely and then because of how the mind works, it's built up all of the the, the charges and mm. if you want a computer analogy, all the files have built up. We need to neutralize them, i.e. compress them, as you would on a computer. Mm -hmm. But what it also does is project into the future based on what's happened in the past mm -hmm. so we can neutralize fear and anxiety and uh, infatuation as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you, go, if you go to the extremities of uh, emotion, Mm -hmm. Both of those are just as dangerous, whether it's positive Absolutely. or negative. Absolutely. Yeah. And like we are human, we are designed to experience those things, but to live on one of those areas opens a lot of space for volatility. So you, you end up swinging all the way back. Mm -hmm. Like I had a relationship in 2017 for four months with a gal that I felt fell really hard for. Mm -hmm. I was completely blindsided, so blind to the negative side right. of her yeah. being and she dumped me out of nowhere and it really hurt and guess what i was swung from euphoric to utterly depressed very quickly yep. whereas if you the place where you live and like you reside so you you can experience those extremities in short amounts but you know to come back to balance mm -hmm. and you're as a thing called the principle of rhythm everything's moving we know that everything's a vibrational frequency mm -hmm. But if you have that kind of volatility between euphoria and depression, you're going to be swinging all the time that far. Yeah. So what we want is to reduce the parameter of your pendulum swing. So, yeah, you might get a little bit sad, but for the most part, you can be um, genuinely enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. This is my kind of um, issue when people say that they want a passion business. Mm -hmm. Passion is defined as a barely controllable emotion. Right. So yeah, passion's a good thing to have a bit of in a business, but right. by and large, uh, what was it? Warren Buffett said that if you uh, can't control your emotions, you have no place managing money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like to keep have a, a business based on that extremity of emotion. Yes. 
like I said, leaves a lot of room for volatility. And like yeah. when people have that kind of business and then get rejected, mm-hmm. that's when like they go, oh, I can't do this. Yes. I, I love it so much, but nobody wants it. So I'm not going to bother. You pull the Whereas like if you just, mm. like I said, genuinely enthusiastic, mm. coming from a place of positive enough that it's sustainable, yes. that's when you can have longevity, sustainability and true power, poise and focus. Absolutely, absolutely. It uh, it takes practice. It takes really um, decision. It it's a, it's a choice. Um, but um, I I love in how you are describing these same things that that uh, the principles by which I live and work as well. Um, in completely different terminology and it mm. excites me like nothing else in this world when I meet the equal passion and the equal um, it, it's such clarity the clarity th- that is um, palpable you can you can feel it right it, it's not just something that that you sense it's right it's something you know <laughs> this mm. is this is like we got the finger here on the pulse of life itself right um how can you not be passionate about that right like i don't know to me life is the most passionate gift that i have ever received and and from that um feeling of uh, appreciation of that fact that i am alive and i get Mm. to experience this life like that is what drives me do you know how many people die every day Mm -hmm. 170,000 worldwide every day so every day that you don't die you are not one of those 170,000. like every day is a gift big enough i don't feel like it but when you start to like actually realize that it is because you're not one of the 170k (laughs) like you still have mission here to fulfill (laughs) exactly i got asked the other day like um when will you know that you've made it Mm -hmm. and i was like i already have yes all needs met like i'm above ground like anything (laughs) life could get worse obviously but life can also get better but it's pretty good right now like i have made it that's it. A numerical amount in a bank account isn't going to change how I feel all that much. No, no. You know, and if I can just go every day giving people something different to think about where they go, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. That's, I hadn't thought of that. Yes. And I'm winning. Yes. And, and reminding people exactly what we are talking about today. I can never, ever get tired of uh, reminding people reminding someone that this all is inside them that they can mm-hmm. also embrace these things um, and just seeing the light inside them switch on you know that light that they have dimmed down because of whatever circumstance they're looking at thinking it's affecting me directly exactly i think by and large people don't understand how few things they can truly control and therefore they get frustrated like this is this is the second podcast that i've been on today which is fantastic i love talking on these um (laughs) but (laughs) even on the last one like this weekend our neighbor he's ex-army and his wife works at the weekends Mm -hmm. and he just goes ballistic at his children shouting at them they have no respect for him and they don't listen and they're not even bad kids like but he cannot control them but the thing is even if he stopped shouting he can never control them as it were he can communicate with them and hope that they are receptive and therefore do what he is asking Mm -hmm. the only three things that you can genuinely control are your perceptions your actions and your decisions everything outside of that you have influence over but you cannot control for sure and everything that that we do have control over, we seem to uh, relinquish that control just at you know willingly give up the the power to actually control the way we feel. And I say control, but I I don't mean control in any uh, sort of forceful way. I mean mm. control as in navigate, be in charge of you know, uh, be fully plugged in. <laughs> 
it it goes with how our media works mm -hmm. like in bowling for columbine if you've ever seen that film marilyn manson talks about how you have the news and there's floods and there's famine there's war there's death somebody's been murdered on the subway cut to commercial by the coal gate or you're not going to get a girlfriend because you've got smelly breath by the um <laughs> clear sill or the girls aren't going to talk to you because you've got spots like but people don't have like critical thinking mm -hmm. programmed into them luckily like i said my parents are awesome one of the things that they always pushed was like you need to think for yourself but if you're in a, a society where nobody tells you that you have the power to think for yourself and then you're pushed apart all these things are pushed upon you like you, you need like the beauty industry for example they need people to feel bad in order to sell their products they need to have people feeling like they're not perfect whole and complete but not yet finished mm -hmm. you know what i mean so when you have that kind of societal conditioning, right. of course people are going to give up their control of their perception because it's already given to them. Right. How do you perceive the war in the Ukraine? Like everyone's like, oh my God, the world's falling in and petrol prices have doubled. Yeah, but is your life actually that bad? We should feel bad for the people over there. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it will end soon. Is it actually affecting you? Do you need to be consumed by fear and crippled by cortisol because you're allowing the news to stress you out you know what i mean yes that is the the personal choice and uh, i believe that uh, we we can uh, help within our own sphere of influence right so if we come to direct contact with somebody who is a refugee from those places who who is you know something that i can actually do to help that situation i will do it without thinking um, but i do not have to contribute to the um, whole um, like the the news explosion and the whole social mm. media discussion about how bad it is because i'm just perpetuating it i'm just making it uh, putting by putting the focus on the negative I'm just enlarging it. I'm putting that magnifying glass there and making, helping it make more of what we don't want to see. Exactly. Mm. Well, you, you're reducing your vibration. Absolutely. In, uh... You're feeling bad in yourself because there will be genuinely nothing that you can change in that situation that exactly. there is at the moment. But if you keep yourself to the higher vibration, Exactly. And then when you do come across you something where you can have influence, influence. You have more influence. I remember like, so the people that in my experience get stressed out and afraid about what's going on in the news are the same people that if they came across people in need, mm -hmm. they'd be like, nope, get away. Mm -hmm. so I was like, I remember when I was living in London, I was walking down the um, main road in Hackney Mm -hmm. and uh, a homeless lady asked me if I had any change. I said, no, sorry, I haven't got any uh, any cash on me. And she went, oh, well, thank you for talking to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, of course, like, we're all human. Mm -hmm. uh, keep your vibration high, even if you can't give something monetary-wise, at least accept that people, like, you, whatever money you have doesn't define who you are. Right. Like, there are plenty of people who are, like, millionaires now who have experienced homelessness. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine if you were the one person that spoke to them with respect and they call you up and they're like, ah, oh, I'd love to give you some money for that time and you made me feel good. Like, mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen in the future. Don't, like, make other people, well, don't be so impersonal. Like, yes, yes, indeed. Be nice, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep your vibration high. Totally. I mean, you are of more... Um, um, you are of service and you are of more use to somebody if you are um, keeping in your alignment and keeping your vibration mm -hmm. high. Um, I used to um, give art classes uh, for, um, for a charity that was a homeless concern here in London. Um, and the people I have met through those art classes that were coming, some of them were homeless and some of them were on the edge of poverty. Mm. Um, but uh, 
as you said, just uh, they, they all absolutely have the same thinking that we do, same dreams, same same aspirations. And when you look up, look at them the same way that that you and I are talking, no, no different uh, how much you're making a month and whether they have food or food stamps or whatever um, to survive, they were they were coming to a place that was providing food and drink for them. And I was there giving my time so that that I could um, uplift them in the spirit so they wouldn't go too low and, and resort in, you know, taking um, drugs or alcohol or something like that. Mm. But the relationships, the friendships that I that I made with uh, with those people and uh, the impact that you make, uh, you you will never know. You may be saving someone's life, somebody mm. who is thinking of taking their life may have a conversation with you and just because you smiled and had time for them that you gave them peace of you mm. peace of your life um, you made an impact in their life right and as you said sometimes we might not have change in our pocket to make a difference to them you know to put the food in their stomach but well, this is as valuable isn't it something to always remember mm -hmm. It's not how, like, the product that you sell or the service you give that people will ever remember. They'll remember how you make them feel. Exactly. And some, sometimes, you know, you might just walk out of the coffee shop carrying a coffee for yourself, right? And you might give it to them if you see them um, on the street. It's just like noticing that we are all part of the same fabric mm. of life i think the way we behave with we, in one thing is how we behave with everything in life mm. like it is absolutely got this effect exactly and like going back to what i was saying about like societal conditioning when you have a society that tells you that you're not beautiful so you need makeup you come from a certain background so you can't be successful yeah, yeah, yeah. when you get to the point of being homeless and society tells you you're homeless so you're screwed you're, you've been written off they don't believe that they can ever get out of that situation. I've forgotten when it was. I That was it. I had a conversation. It wasn't with a homeless lady, but she had had to move because of her divorce. She'd had to downsize. Mm -hmm. And um, she was saying, I was saying, like, you're fantastic. Like, you can do, like, she wanted to get into coaching, it was. Mm -hmm. I was like, Go for it. Like you've got experience. I don't trust people who haven't ever lived through anything. Yes. People who have had a perfect life. <laughs> hmm, I ain't taking advice from them because they don't know what they're talking about. But I was like, you've had all this experience. Why not put it to good use and make, turn your adversity into an advantage? Mm -hmm. Nice little soundbite for you there. <laughs> and she's like, but do you think I can actually do that? I was like, yeah, do it. Like, and she's like, ah, oh, all right. But because people are told that, like, they've been written off, that they're useless, that, like, they're just a leech on society and whatever, they believe it because they get told it so much. All the imagery that, that's in the media portrays them as negative, and then they're like, oh, crap, I'm in this situation, and I identify as that. Yeah. When people say, I am homeless, that's an identifying uh, statement. Right. Whereas when, I, I really like it when you hear people go, I'm experiencing a bit of homelessness. Mm -hmm. that's the right way to think about it right. same as being uh broke mm -hmm. being broke is a temporary condition being saying i am poor yes that's an identifying way of describing yourself mm -hmm. and much harder to get out of than i'm broke at the moment mm -hmm. you know what i mean yes yes absolutely Oh my goodness me. I mean, those are uh, really some of the big subjects. I, I, I bet we didn't uh, set out at the beginning of this conversation to get to those. Uh, but, but it is absolutely like the we need to uh, be more inclusive, more hmm. inclusive in our in our conversations. Um, and well, perhaps go ahead. You, you said like, thank you for me for being so vulnerable and open like mm -hmm. if you try and if this goes back to the principle of polarity and rhythm and that uh kind of thinking mm -hmm. if you're trying to avoid one side or the other yes. 
obviously like if you're avoiding the positive you're depressed because you like that's a perception thing you can't see the positive that's going on and there's always positive and negative as you said the tony robbins quote but if you're not willing to talk about negative things that what the phrase is what you resist persists yes like if you're not willing to talk about issues with homelessness the homelessness doesn't go away because you're ignoring it Mm -hmm. it gets worse because you're not doing anything about it so as a society again we need to have more conversation around things that are difficult and like here's another rape nobody wants to talk about that because it is horrific but not enough is spoken about in terms of how the difference between identifying as a victim and being victimized like i did a, a post in tony robbins uh, ultimate breakthrough group about exactly that because unfortunately to about 10 years ago i was raped i had my consent taken away from me mm-hmm. and it, uh, it makes you feel a little bit sick re- revisiting those memories but by and large i don't identify as a victim i know i was victimized but i have changed my perception and i use it to be able to move forward as opposed to linger and make excuses around it you can be victimized in the moment but to identify as a victim is a long-term thing that's going to be disempowering yes over a sustained amount of time staying that way yeah the same with suffering like everyone it's a absolute inevitability of being human that you feel pain Mm -hmm. to keep hold of that pain and to suffer is a choice Mm. you have to be able to let things go and change your perception of what's happened indeed and going back to the Mm -hmm. the principle of polarity where there's positive and negative to everything Mm -hmm. there is exactly that there's positive and negative for everything yes in that moment i had my consent taken away from me it makes you feel a little sick the last thing i remember that like i was really drunk at the time the last thing i remember this girl saying to me was i didn't come here for nothing because she had intended on spending the night with my friend right. knowing that's what she said and it makes me feel a bit I felt, I felt really disgusting at the time it makes me feel a bit like Ugh, now but i'm over it like there are positives and negatives to everything the positive of that happening to me Mm-hmm. is that I can talk about it with you now and I can find strength in what has happened mm-hmm. to hopefully possibly inspire others to not sit in the sufferance mm-hmm. that comes from their own experience. True, true. If if um, it's too difficult for, for someone perhaps listening to, to this um, to process this by yourself... Uh, know that there are people there who will have enough compassion and understanding to help you process that so to detach yourself from the way of thinking because it is the the meaning that you have applied and the way you are thinking and the story that you're telling yourself that is actually making you feel that way it's no longer that um, the the act that you have suffered, right? It may, it may be um, absolutely, um, um, it is unjust and, and uh, unfair that that happened to you, um, but it is now your choice to keep that um, part of your life going forward. Which yeah. absolutely does Apologies, happen. I made this conversation really oh. deep and dark very quickly. Ew. Maybe yeah. should have prefaced something there. It's real. <laughs> you know? This is my thing, though. I can't take anything too seriously for too well. long. Yes. So, like, I'm back to being Afian Bubby now. Like... Of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm really. I'm. I'm so thrilled to have met you. And uh, if you if you just take a listen to a couple of these uh, episodes and see a couple of these interviews, you will see that. Uh, all of my guests and I absolutely don't shy away from going and uh, beyond, you know, under the surface in this uh, uh, in in this exploration. But it always brings us back to the to the surface. It brings us back to light. It brings us back to laughter because we have been through those experiences, uh, not 
to be um, submerged by them, but but to go through them and come mm. out the other side as a as a version of us that is now more complete, more understanding, more more, well, more the, of us. <laughs> the analogy I give for that is like you go to the the gym. Well, some people don't, and some people don't <laughs> do weights at the gym. But people who do weights. Mm -hmm. It's called resistance training, and it makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. What is everything <laughs> negative that happens in life? It's Beautiful. things of part. Yeah, it's yeah. resistance that you come up against, and if you push through it, you come out the other side stronger. <laughs> it's, it's exactly the same thing. The mind is uh, the mind is a muscle in the same way as your actual muscles. Like you have to build fortitude and tolerance to things in order to progress like a weak mind ain't gonna go anywhere you have to build up a strong mind in order to prosper yes yes or you can see it as an art and you can you can explore and be free because you are mm. free um and uh, let your imagination take you to a more positive place uh, because it is your imagination that is creating the current uh, uh, experience that you are uh, committing yourself to living right just imagine that in the next moment you can make a different choice and have a different experience um, so exactly. regard your life as an art form and uh, because you are born as an artist it's beautiful uh, Rob, I don't think we can exhaust this conversation, right? <laughs> it can go on and on. Yeah, I could go on about this for yeah. this kind of stuff for days. I, I go on <laughs> about this for days, <laughs> for a pretty long time now. I want to ask you about your community. Do you have a, a group? How do you communicate with your people? Who is the best person who should come to you directly? I have a Facebook group. Uh, if you go to elitemindsetmasters.com forward slash group, mm -hmm. that'll redirect you link. straight there. I'll put the link. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link will be there. So you can just click and go straight to it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, predominantly, we work with coaches and agency owners, mm -hmm. but on a whole, more online entrepreneurs. And... Um, yeah, that's who the, our core program is tailored to. Um, however, if somebody wants to discuss what I've spoken about in this uh, interview, I am more than happy to have a discussion. That's one of the things that I have learned fairly recently, to be fair. If you have that view of positive and negative being uh, inevitable mm -hmm. in any given moment mm -hmm. it means you can not try to avoid the negative so you have to, you can be open to experiencing everything if somebody wants to take well have a debate on something that i've said i'm more than happy to if somebody wants help yeah. with their mindset and um being able to come to the ways of thinking that i've spoken about here i'm always open to a conversation that is so beautiful and, and, and so important that that we have a place in our community where someone can come maybe with a general um, interest to in this direction and then to go deeper and to qualify maybe to to uh, work with you or, or to ex explore more where this can take them um, so, so important and and thank you thank you for sharing this thank, thank you for having me it's been excellent and <laughs> that conversation yeah. got very deep very quickly <laughs> my apologies again you you should not apologize and you will see that that's how